Suge Knight has spent so much time in jail that you could say he's gotten pretty comfortable being there and could call it his new home. Well, I doubt that very much though. Looking at the number of years he still has to go, I'm sure he's looking for ways to get the hell out of prison. Initially, he had no intention of saying anything or coming clean about his criminal history. But prison isn't being very friendly to him, so I guess he has no choice but to spill everything to the police. Keep watching till the end of this video to see Suge Knight reveals who really killed Tupac and Biggie Smalls. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Suge Knight's History of Violence Suge Knight, or as he was popularly known in the streets, Sugar Bear, is one of the key figures in the 1990s gangster rap movement's popularity. The former co-founder of Death Row Records is a well-known rule breaker who has always found himself in some of the deadliest crimes in the rap industry's history, including the deaths of Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. But Suge's lifestyle didn't just begin when he entered the rap industry. In fact, coming from the streets of Compton, many won't be surprised that Suge turned out the way he did. He saw the wild side of the streets, or rather, was exposed to the gang lifestyle at a very young age. And it didn't take a while before he was robbing and beating up people. Suge, however, went into the rap industry with this kind of lifestyle, bullying his way to the top. He terrorized everyone who crossed his path in the industry and paid no mind to age, gender, or race. If you think the late gangster rapper King Von was feared in the rap industry, wait till you find out what Suge Knight did to the OGs of rap back in the day. Everywhere he went, he was known to be notorious. Well, I guess all that street life and bullying couldn't keep him out of jail. Suge Knight and Tupac's Relationship in 1995, Tupac was on Rikers Island for sexual assault charges when Suge Knight offered to pay his $3 million bail on the condition that he signs with Death Row Records. He said, if I pay for this, I want you on my label. Suge was really good at recognizing talent and he recognized the talent in Tupac. He basically went to Interscope where Tupac was previously signed and bullied the president, Jimmy Iovine, into letting him sign Tupac. Give me Tupac, sign his contract over to me. I know what to do with it. So he then went and got Tupac out of jail and turned him into a death row artist. His record label also helped launch the careers of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Tupac had loyalty to death row. He didn't just sign for financial reasons because at that point, any label would have picked him up. Part of the reason he chose it was because he felt like the East Coast was against him. When Suge got him out of jail, he went straight to the studio and wrote the album All Eyes On Me, released in early 1996, and sold over 5 million units. Suge and Tupac were like inseparable brothers and made so many hit songs together, bowing to no one in the rap industry. Suge changed Tupac's life, making him a star in the rap game. Believe me, anyone would kill to have that type of relationship. Tupac's Death on the night of September 7, 1996, Tupac was in Las Vegas, Nevada to celebrate his business partner Tracy Danielle Robinson's birthday and to attend the Bruce Seldon vs. Mike Tyson boxing match with Suge Knight at the MGM Grand. In the lobby where the match was being held, someone in their group spotted Orlando Baby Lane Anderson an alleged Southside Compton crip, whom the individual accused of having recently tried to snatch his neck chain with a Death Row Records medallion in a shopping mall. Apparently, Baby Lane got the beating of his life that evening. Tupac then headed to his hotel room, changed into fresh clothes, and then headed with Suge to Club 662 in a black BMW 750IL sedan, part of a larger convoy. At about 11 p.m. on Las Vegas Boulevard, bicycle-mounted police stopped the car for its loud music and lack of license plates. The plates were found in the trunk and the vehicle was released without a ticket. A few minutes later, at about 11.15 p.m., at a stoplight, a white four-door late-model Cadillac sedan pulled up to the passenger side and out of the car a hand popped out and shots were rapidly fired into the car. Tupac was struck four times once in the arm, once in the thigh, and twice in the chest, with one bullet entering his right lung. Shards hit Suge's head, leaving some injuries. 
Despite his injuries, he drove with Tupac a mile away from the crime scene to Las Vegas Boulevard and Harmon Avenue. Tupac was taken to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, where he was heavily sedated and put on life support. Tupac died of respiratory failure, followed by a cardiac arrest due to the removal of his right lung while in the critical care unit on the afternoon of Friday, September 13, 1996. Doctors tried to resuscitate him, but were unable to halt the bleeding. At 4.03 p.m., he was pronounced dead. Biggie's death. It's so crazy how Biggie Smalls was killed the same way Tupac died. You'd even think their murders were planned by someone who hated them. On March 9th, 1997, Biggie Smalls attended a Soul Train Music Awards after party at the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles. At around 1 a.m., Biggie Smalls left the party with Sean Combs, popularly known as Puff Daddy, who was at the time the CEO of Bad Boy Records, the label to which the rapper was signed. Puff Daddy left in a car with his other crew members, while Biggie left in a separate car with his driver and two friends. Biggie's car was directly behind Puff Daddy's as they headed north on Fairfax Avenue. His car made a stop at a stoplight on Wilshire Boulevard when a black Chevy pulled up and fired a gun at him from the driver's side window, hitting him four times. Out of the four people in his car, Biggie was the only one who was hit. No one needs to tell you that it was definitely an assassination attempt, just like Tupac's death. I mean, how did Biggie end up being the only one shot in the car? Puff Daddy ran out of his car toward Biggie's, dragged him out and drove him to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where the rapper was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. It all felt like a mystery and a cover-up because the police didn't investigate the case until about a month later. I mean, that's all shades of suspicious, wouldn't you say? Suge Knight reveals who killed Tupac and Biggie. After 21 years of arguable statements, conspiracies, Suge Knight has now decided to disclose the two individuals responsible for the fateful evenings of September 7, 1996 and March 9, 1997. The former Death Row CEO has finally revealed that he was, in fact, the real target in the drive-by shooting that killed Tupac. He claims that his ex-wife, Sharitha, and former Death Row record security chief, Reggie White Jr., killed Tupac in an attempt to end his life. Suge's attorney, Thaddeus Culpepper, wrote in a signed affidavit that Knight has known for many years that Reggie Wright Jr. and his ex-wife, Sharitha, were behind the murder of Tupac and the attempted murder of Knight. Knight also had alleged details of Wright's involvement in the Biggie Smalls murder case. That's the end of today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more content. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Thanks.